Hello, everybody. My name is Amir Abbas, and I'm with my colleague Colton Smith to talk about predicting suicidal thoughts from substance abuse and demographics. We will start with our key findings right from the beginning. But we have came to know that a combination of features related to substance abuse and demographic variables will be able to predict a person's tendency to conduct suicide among addicts. And it is an opportunity to intervene early and prevent lives. According to World Health Organization, suicide is the lead, third leading cause of death among individuals between age 15 to 24. Therefore, it's a very important, um, important that we intervene early. With this background, I have to say that suicidal attempts represent one of the most important reasons why patients present to psychiatric emergencies, which in decade has shown a rise in suicidal behavior. Substance abuse increases psychological distress and therefore reduces a person's coping strategies and decreases resilience. There have been extensive research showing a close relationship between suicidal behavior and use of alcohol and other illicit drugs. The substance abuse and alcohol intake is an important risk factor for attempting su for, for suicidal ideation. The precise practice of this precise a mechanism of substance abuse that makes a person to induce suicidal ideation is needed to be explored. Despite the distressing statistics, suicidal attempts and suicidal ideation among addicts is a preventable condition. The phenomenon of suicide can be understood as a continuum moving from mild depression to moderate depression and from moderate depression to severe depression and suicidal depression. Therefore, it is critical to identify individuals who are more likely to be suicidal because of their addictive behavior. The goal of our project is to assess how substance use and demographic conditions are related to suicidal thoughts. We want to identify individuals who are most likely to have suicidal thoughts given their inf information on the variables that include substance use and some of their demographic variables. The object, the goal of our project was to measure use different classifiers and use machine learning algorithms to assess the classification performance with holistic metric approach. The data set which we chose for this analysis which was from National Survey on Drug Use and Health. The information in this data set was composed of substance use and mental health issues across the population of the United States of America the data set chosen for this project comes from 2019 National Survey. Some features which are present within this data set include tobacco, alcohol, marijuana users, hallucinogens, pain relievers, and tranquilizers. And we also have demographic attributes that include marital status, education, employment, health insurance, and income. The main outcome of interest was um, mental distress in the form of suicidal thoughts. As I told you that the main outcome of interest is in the suicidal thoughts. And as you can see that this, uh, this is showing, this correlation matrix is showing how other variables are related to suicide or correlated with suicidal thoughts. I'm not going to go into the details of them in all of these numbers, but you can see that most of the variables have some level of correlation. Some of them have positive correlation, others have negative correlation, but with the help of different machine learning models, what we try to assess how these correlations can be used to predict whether a person has suicidal thoughts or not. To talk about the results from different machine learning models, I will hand over to my colleague, uh, Colton Smith. Thank you, Amir. Speaking about the, how we're going to measure performance of these models, we're using sensitivity recall because these are going to lower our false negatives. The reason we want to focus on the false negatives because they are the ones that we get most at harm from the algorithm. What I mean by that, is when our algorithm decides a true positive, it is saying that we predicted somebody has suicidal thoughts and they actually do have suicidal thoughts. However, if the algorithm does a false negative saying that they predict somebody does not have negative thoughts, when in reality they do have negative thoughts, then they may be denied certain medical um, services or needed practitioner advice. And therefore they are the ones who would be uh, the most conflicted with our algorithm misperforming or misclassifying these individuals. Therefore, since we want to maximize our true positives and minimize our false negatives, we're going to focus on sensitivity. Just a quick week recap from you can see here, the true positive rates divided by true positive rates plus the FN rates is going to give us our sensitivity score. 
So as we have less, less false negatives, we have greater closer to one with our true positives. The machine algorithms was able to test out was the logistic regression, naive Bayes classification, the support vector machine, the K nearest neighbors and the random forest. The K and N and the random forest are both colored because they're the ones who gave us the best uh, recall performance out of the other three. To get into the actual details, logistic regression performed 70% for sensitivity. Naive Bayes was the worst at 62%. SVM and KNN were very close at 70 and 71%, while the random force was able to achieve a 99%. And there is the obvious um, go to for, 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 um, for analysis and predicting suicidal thoughts. The logic regression, SVM and KNN all have about the same, whereas random forest, the techniques that it has by grabbing a sample of subset of features and then building decision trees on those sub subset of, of features. And then go ahead and um, with the decision tree calculating how accurate that is or how pure it is. The node purity with the Gini index is the reason Weebly was able to outperform above the other ones. And it's randomness, you know, ensemble randomness method of it, and plus calculating the, the best purity of each decision tree is the reason that Weebly was able to do very good at getting this mixed information of demographics and substance abuse to give us the best sensitivity score. Continuing on what features were actually important for the random forest, we have outlined on the x-axis the number of features and on the y-axis the sensitivity rate. As we can see, there's a positive correlation. As we increase the number of features, we also increase in the sensitivity of a random forest. This, this gives us the bottom up line that we need to have, that the features that we have subset are actually all very important in, in, um, lower, in lowering our sensitivity rate or giving us the best sensitivity rate and lowering our false negatives. This table is gives us the exact numbers where we have the number of features and then um, with the number of features, how actually the sensitivity is. And we have this steady, consistent pace. At 13 features, we get uh, above 90. And we're eating 18, we get very close to 99, uh, almost 100%. Now, these are the, the important features from the random forest. Again, it is measuring the random, what do we mean by important features? It means that these are the features that most often gave the highest Gini index, maximized the purest node um, of each random decision tree in the ensemble random forests. Therefore, we can see that the family income, age, overall health, alcohol intake, race, education, number of days used marijuana and employment status are the ranking of the most important and this is also, if we notice, it is a mix of substance abuse plus demographic information. With these mix and the randomness uh, ensembling of the mix of these variables, including about half demographic and half the substance abuses, this is showing to, to prove to be a very good classifier at being able to classify those with suicidal thoughts. And it's definitely something that we're very happy of and we're glad to be able to give and to help medical practitioners use this information to help in their analysis of helping mitigate those who are having suicidal thoughts. To explain the more importance of what this conclusion means for the medical team, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Amir. So talking about the model, we have a model, which is random forest model. And I, on the basis of that, we can predict individuals among addicts who may have suicidal thoughts. The specified features can be used to predict the fact that whether a person will have suicidal thoughts or not. And this is extremely important as we talked about in the previous slides that the model which we identified has a very high sensitivity and specificity. Therefore, this model can be used for public health practice and therefore uh, for screening of the individuals and identifying individuals who may be at the risk of suicidal, uh, of uh, undergoing a suicidal attempt or they can also be used for diagnosis uh, within the clinics because these models have high positive and negative predictive value. Therefore, uh, these, uh, what I'm trying to say that this model can be used for public health as well as for the clinical practice. Uh, and with this, I will um, thank you all for listening to us. Take care for the time being, bye. Thank you.